Welcome to Elgin Museum Mix. In this episode, we'll be making our own Neolithic carved stone ball. Carved stone balls, also known as petrospheres, are most commonly found in Scotland, although examples have been found elsewhere in Britain and Ireland. They date mainly from the later Neolithic period, which you might know as the Stone Age, from around 3000 to 2500 BC. Over 400 examples are known, with the majority having been found in the Aberdeenshire area, just to the east of Murray. Carved stone balls are quite strange objects, and no one really knows for certain why they were made, what they were for, or what they meant. Lots of suggestions have been made over the years. Perhaps they were used as a weapon, or as a ceremonial object, or perhaps they were pieces of art, like the ornaments you might have on your shelves at home. Some have even suggested they were used as rollers to move large stones when our Neolithic ancestors were building their stone circles. They are often called mysterious. Carved from solid blocks of stone, often hard granite stones, as well as some sandstones, it would have taken time and great skill to create the beautifully ornate patterns which decorate the balls. Not all carved stone balls look the same. Some are plain, with only undecorated projecting knobs or discs. Others are decorated with intricate patterns of spirals, zigzags, lines on the discs or knobs, while others still are covered in lots and lots of small bumps. At Elgin Museum, we have several carved stone balls on display as part of our archaeology exhibit. OK, so it's time now to have a go at making our own replica carved stone ball. So first, what are we going to need to make our carved stone ball? Um, well, first things first, we're going to need some dough of some kind. So you can use Play-Doh, um, Play-Doh that you've made or Play-Doh that you've got from the shop. You could use plasticine, you could use salt dough, uh, you could use air drying clay, uh, whatever you've got. So we'll put a recipe up, a couple of recipes up for uh, Play-Doh and for a uh, salt uh, dough that you can have a go at making yourself and that's just with whatever you've got in the kitchen. So here I've got some um, play-doh that I've made myself and with the uh, homemade play-doh and the salt dough if you um, once you finish making it you can leave it to air dry and it'll kind of go a bit crusty and dry a little bit or you can pop it in the oven on a really low heat and that'll sort of dry it out and make it a little bit firmer if you want to keep your carved stone ball. If you don't want to keep it, you can, once you've finished it, take it all apart again and start fresh because it's just um, soft squidgy dough and you can start all over again. You're also going to need some kitchen tin foil, some tools for making marks, so like a lolly stick, maybe some plastic cutlery, um, also some, if you've got some um, Things for piping icing if you're making for cakes and things like that see they've got different shaped uh, holes on the top they're gonna make some really great patterns uh, string is something else that you could have um, little cocktail sticks anything that you might think you want to use to make different shapes and patterns in your dough you're also going to need a little bit of water and a little small paintbrush or you can just use your finger and make sure you've got a nice waterproof surface and you're not uh, working on the this table so that you don't make too much of a mess. Um, just have a look, we've got some examples of ones that we've done earlier. So we'll just bring a few of these in so you can have a look. So this one you can see we've got some little square dots so we used a little kind of square toothpick tool or you can make stripes using um, uh, the lolly stick is really great for making these kind of patterns and again some stripes there and some little um, tiny circles which you might not be able to see which um, you could use the um, piping nozzles to make little impressions with that um, a spiral here uh, we can use a string and we can push the string in and then when we pull the string out it makes a really nice um, pattern and it leaves a nice texture behind as well um, another one here which is just all spirals on the big sort of buttons or knobs, a little bit like in the museum, the ones in there they don't have the patterns on them. Another one here which is a little bit 
like the one in, that we've got in the museum with lots of tiny buttons and, and then the third one with the bigger knobs and buttons on it that have got different patterns just to see um, there's loads of different things you could do this one we filled in in between as well and made a little pattern in there so it's really up to you how you make your own design and um, it's your chance to just be really creative and create your own unique uh, replica carved stone ball These ones uh, have been made using an air drying clay and so they dry quite solid. Um, just leave them out on the radiator to dry a little bit. So we're going to start with the um, kitchen foil and you can use any size piece you want. What we're going to do is we're going to scrunch it up into a ball and this sort of just forms the core of your car stone ball so that you don't use quite as much dough and it's not quite as um, heavy to work with so it's sort of a little bit more stable, it doesn't collapse so easily and um, it also dries a lot quicker when it's on the tin foil so you can make it whatever size you want I've just done one there that's about sort of five or six centimetres in diameter and you see I've just scrunched it, I've not scrunched it too tight because you don't want it too tiny but um, really just whatever size you want. So I've just used a slightly smaller piece of tin foil there to make a slightly smaller one. Okay. So once you've got your, there you go, you've got two different sizes of, of um, inner for your carved stone ball. So the next thing you're going to need is some of your dough, whether that's your play dough or your air drying clay or your plasticine or your salt dough. So I'm just going to put these um, tin foil balls to one side and get our, our dough and just flatten it out a little bit. Now you can make your play-doh whatever colour you want. I haven't put any food colouring in mind to change the colour but um, it does mean if you leave it plain if you wanted to you could paint it at the end and you could make it look stone coloured or you could make it um, bright colours. You could do whatever you like. It's your own unique carved stone ball so it's really up to you how you make it look at the end. Smaller one actually, so let's go with a smaller one. So once you've got your dough kind of flattened out, you can use your fingers to do that or you can use a rolling pin if you want to use a rolling pin. Just going to kind of wrap it around the tin foil and squish it together. And we'll just, we'll take those ends off. So once you've kind of squashed it around a bit, you can squash these ends off and twist them off a little bit. And there we go. And then it's just a case of just kind of squeezing it and squishing it with your hands so that it's all nicely wrapped around the tin foil and it's sort of a nice uh, circular spherical shape. So there we go we have our basic um, sphere shape for our carved stone ball and it's ready then to add your decorations. So like we've seen we've got these ones with the big kind of disc shape uh, buttons on them or we've got these ones with lots of tiny little knobs on them. Some of them are if you remember um, they don't have the knobs on them, they have lots of patterns um, carved into the surface. So you could absolutely do that. Just see if we can have a go here with a little bit of string. So if we push the string in, in a bit of a spiral pattern, just as an example. And then when we take the string out, we have a little spiral pattern there. But what we're going to do, what I'm going to do today rather, is um, make one with these big buttons on them. So that means we're going to need some more dough. So we're going to put this ball to one side and we're going to need discs that are slightly smaller than the kind of um, top surfaces. So just need a little bit more dough so you can take first off some of your scraps 
from wrapping around the tin foil and just squish them in your hands to make a sort of uh, circle, ball shape. Okay, and let's see. Let's see how big this goes when we just flatten it down with our fingers. It's maybe a little bit too big, I think. So we'll just take a little bit off. And because it's the dough, it's really easy to just then start again. If you've got warm hands, it'll be even easier. So we've got a, a rough circle and we'll just squash it down. There we go. So you can see it's just about sort of a centimetre or so thick. But it can really be as thick or as thin as you like. And we'll make it sort of flattish to start with because that's going to make it easier for fixing on top of the carved stone ball. So uh, in this example we've got one, two, three, four of these buttons. So I'll just make some more of these. So that means more dough. So there we've got our four buttons to stick onto our carved stone ball. So what we're going to do is just um, uh, use a, a fork or the stick just to sort of rough up one side a little bit. Just to kind of help it stick a little bit more. So we'll do that on all of them. Okay, and then where we're going to stick on the top of the ball. So we'll just rough that up a little bit. And then this is where we're going to use just a little tiny bit of water. So we've got the paintbrush and a little bit of water. And this should hopefully just make it a little bit easier for the two surfaces to stick to each other because they do get a little bit dried out. When you're working with the dough it gets a little bit dry. So maybe if you've got a big bowl of, of dough cover it up with a little bit of cling wrap or a Tupperware lid or something like that. So there we have our first button is attached to our carved stone ball. So let's see we're going to put the other buttons we're going to have one here, one on this side and a third one on this side. And we'll just squash that one down a little bit. So we'll put the next one on and we'll just pop it on here. So we'll just rough that surface up a little bit again. Again with a little bit of water. Don't need a huge amount, just a little bit to kind of work like a bit of glue. Okay. So we've got two buttons on there, one, two. So our next one is going to go round about here. On this side, so we'll just score this face again. A bit of water, and last one on. Oops, last one doesn't want to stick. be a little bit difficult uh, depending on how quickly your dough dries out so mine has decided to dry out really quickly today but there we go then we have our one two three four buttons attached to our carved stone ball and then we've got a nice flat surface for it to rest on while we do some decoration so I think maybe we start with um, using the uh, icing nozzle. So this one's got a little circle on it. So I think you can make some great circle patterns. So we just gotta 
push down with it. Let's just go back over that a little bit. So you can see there you can make some great patterns. It depends what shapes of um, piping nozzles you've got. Or maybe you've got a straw handy. A straw would be really great for making these little um, tiny circle patterns as well. Let's just do some on this side. So you can see there we've got lots of tiny little dimples. And so you've got to be a little bit careful now once you start decorating them. You've got to be a little bit careful how you hold it so you don't squash the patterns off that you've already put on. So on this side I think we'll try with the lolly stick and we'll just make some nice line patterns. Where you can just squash them on. That might help it stick a little bit more as well. Just go over some of these. And maybe we'll go in the other direction. And we'll just make it a little bit sort of checkerboard. There we go. So we've got little square pattern on that side, we've got our circle pattern on this side. Now, let's see on this side, I'm going to be really careful and try not to squash the um, decoration that I've already done. So let's see if I can get this string to go in in a nice spiral. It's a bit tricky, you might need somebody to help with this bit for an extra pair of hands. So we just push the string in in a spiral pattern. Oh, it doesn't want to stay in today. And just push that down a little bit. And then you can just see there's a little spiral pattern there. So maybe I'll just use the one of these um, plastic picnic knife to just um, mark it a little bit more. So now that we can see where the line is that we've made for the string, just gently poke in with this um, blunt picnic knife. And then we can make the spiral stand out a little bit more. And we can add a little bit more texture with the little serrated teeth of the plastic knife as well. Make sure you're um, using one of these plasticky um, picnic ones because then they're not sharp. You have to be quite careful with these. So we've got our spiral, we've got our dots, we've got our checkerboard, which I might you see there I've managed to squash a little bit. So we can just pop that back on while the dough is still soft, squash it back in, do one here a little bit, there we go, oh and we've lost a few of our dimples as well, just put one back in there, and then for the last side, let's see, I've got one of these um, star shaped icing nozzles, so we'll just see how that turns out. That's going to make some interesting patterns. And then I think in these gaps, maybe we'll make some little circle shapes with the bottom of this um, piping nozzle. Really you can use anything that's going to make a, a pattern or an impression. So like say a straw would work really well or the lolly sticks. You can make a little square shape in some of these circles to make a little pattern. And it depends how soft your dough is, as to how um, proud the shapes 
<coughs> stand out that you're imp imprinting into them. So just a case of you be careful because you don't want to tear a hole in the dough. Um, but you want to be able to see the patterns that you're making as well. So we'll just make some little lines at the top here. There we go. So there we have it. We have a little checkerboard pattern. We've got our little tiny dots. We've got a really lovely spiral. Uh, we've got some little star patterns and then some little dashes and lines and um, rings and uh, square patterned in between the spaces. So what I'm going to do is I'll just pop that to one side and I'll let that dry. Uh, you can uh, you could leave it on a, a sunny windowsill to just dry out a little bit in the air or let's say you could put it in a really really low oven if you get um, somebody to help you with that you can put it in a really 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 low oven just for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and that'll just kind of dry it out a little bit once it's dry you can try painting it or you could leave it the colour that you've um, made your dough so maybe you've got nice brightly coloured dough you could, if you've got lots of different colours of Play-Doh, you could make each knob a different colour, each button a different colour, and have the main ball one colour. Uh, it's really up to you how you make your uh, carved stone ball stand out. They say there's lots of different things you could do. You could try uh, making lots of tiny balls. So for this one, we would just have the big core ball that we started with. And then you would just need lots and lots of little tiny balls of dough. And again, you just would squash one side and score it a little bit with your fork. I'll just show you there. You could then, you would then, uh, using a little bit of water again, and I'll just demonstrate on this one that we've just finished, a little bit of water again, and that would stick on there. And it gets a little bit tricky when you're adding lots of the dimples to the ball to make it look a little bit like this. But you can see now I've managed to make this one look a little bit like a face. <laughs> That'll cheer you all up. And um, you would just make lots more of these and cover the whole surface. And um, you could put patterns in them as well if you wanted to put some patterns into them. But it's quite easy once you've got your dough. And like I say, if you don't want to um, bake your dough, if you don't want to keep it, you could just pull it apart squish it all up again and start from scratch.